Next, uh, let us discuss the most important property of a nucleus that is nuclear binding energy denoted by the letter B. Nuclear binding energy, the name itself indicates that uh, the energy required to bind all the nucleons together inside the nucleus. So, here let us define nuclear binding energy as the energy equivalent of mass difference between nucleus and the sum of the nucleons in the nucleus. That is, if we take uh, individual masses of masses of individual nucleons inside the nucleus and sum it together, that is total mass of the nucleons together and uh, the mass of the nucleo, nucleus separate then these two will find a mass difference that is sum of the masses of the nucleons and the mass of the nucleus itself will find a mass difference. So this mass difference if we take it as a delta m then from Einstein's equation delta m into c square is the energy equivalent of a, uh, mass difference. So this energy equivalent that is the mass ener ma energy equivalent of this mass difference actually maintains the stability of the nucleus. So that's why we define it that way. We can calculate uh, binding energy of the nucleus from this definition. For a nuclide with the nucleon number A and proton number Z, binding energy B is expressed as B is equal to Z into MP plus N into MN minus the nucle nucleus X with the mass number A, then atomic number, proton number Z into C square. That is, uh, Z is a number of proton, MP is a mass of proton, then Z into MP is a total mass of the protons. Here N is a number of neutron, then N, Mn is the mass of the neutron, N into Mn is the total mass of the neutron. These two together cons, uh, uh, gives uh, the total mass of the nucleons minus mass of the nucleus with the ma a, a num total nucleon number and the proton number. So there is a mass difference that into C square is the binding energy. So using this equation we can calculate binding energy. In B, Z MP plus MN, then MN minus X, a mass of XAN is termed as a mass defect denoted by delta M. So delta M into C square is the binding energy. Next we'll pass on to Two other properties which are very much important related to binding energy. So that is proton separation energy and a neutron separation energy. The name here also the name itself indicates uh, the proton separation energy is the energy needed to remove a proton from the nucleus and likewise neutron separation energy is the energy uh, needed to remove a neutron from the nucleus. And the proton uh, separation energy is denoted by sp and uh, neutron separation energy is denoted by sn as sn. Now let's derive the expression for a, a proton and a neutron separation energies. When a neutron is removed from the nucleus, it is then represented as x a minus 1 z n minus 1. That is neutron less uh, from the uh, total number of nucleons, one neutron is less, that is a minus 1. Then from the total number of neutron, it is less by 1, then n minus 1, z remains the same. Neutron separation energy, Sn is the difference between binding energies of X A Z N that is nucleus before the removal of neutron and X A minus 1 Z N minus 1. So binding energy let us uh, write down the binding energy for uh, the uh, former nucleus and the 
the uh, nucleus after the removal of neutron. The first one is the binding energy of the first uh, nucleus X A Z N that is Z M P plus N M N minus mass of X A Z N into C square. Let us take it as equation number one. And after removal of the neutron, the binding energy of the nucleus is uh, X A minus 1 Z N minus 1 is equal to Z M P plus N minus 1, don't forget it, N minus 1 M N minus M mass of X A minus 1 Z N minus 1. X is a notation for uh, the nuclide into C square. That is, let us take it as equation number Two. Then neutron separation energy Sn is the difference between binding energy of the uh, first nucleus and binding energy after removal of neutron that is binding energy of Xa Zn minus uh, binding energy of uh, Xa minus 1 Z n minus 1 here it is a binding energy you have to write it as a binding energy okay. Let us take it as equation number 3. Then substituting 1 and 2 in 3. We have Sn is equal to Sn is equal to Zmp plus N Mn minus M Z mass of uh, X A Z N into C square minus Zmp plus n minus 1 mn minus mass of uh, x a minus 1 z n minus 1 into c square. So here we have similar terms like uh, Zmp here in both the uh, terms uh, uh, they cancel out and also here we have n mn here also n mn these two cancel out and what remains is subtracting similar terms and uh, rearranging what we get for uh, uh, neutron separation energy is Sn is equal to mass of uh, Xa minus 1 Zn minus 1 minus mass of Xa Zn plus Mn that is mass of neutron into C square. So this is how we can calculate uh, neutron separation energy. Following the same steps, we can calculate proton separation energy also. Proton separation energy SP is the difference in binding energy of uh, XAZN and XA minus 1, Z minus 1, N, where Z minus 1 represents the proton number less by 1. So now uh, I hope uh, it's clear by now. Working out as before, we get SP is equal to SP is a proton separation energy. SP is equal to M into XA minus 1 by Z minus 1 XN minus M is a mass of a XA, not M into, it's a mass of a mass of XA ZN plus mass of proton that is uh, into C square. So, you may work out uh, all the steps uh, just uh, similar to the pre previous one that is for a proton neutron separation energy. When we work with the atomic masses, Mp may be replaced by Mh that is hydrogen nucleus. So, we may replace mass of proton with the mh that, thus we have sp is equal to mass of xa minus 1 z minus 1 n minus mass of xa z n plus mass of hydrogen nucleus into c square neutron and proton separation energies are analogous to ionization energy in atoms so that's the relevance and importance of a neutron separation energy that is ionization energy is the energy required to remove electron from the atom the same way this uh, neutron and proton separation energies are uh, energies required to remove neutron or a uh, proton from the nucleus snnsp show evidence for shell structure in nucleus just like atomic shell model also it leads to another important information 
that the nucleons are distributed in different shells inside the nucleus just like electrons inside in different shells of a atom as an extended knowledge of neutron and proton separation energies here is a table showing variation of sn and sp4 various nuclides just find out what happens to them as a value of nuclides increases and also some exceptions are there in the table and find the reason for it binding energy curve is a graph plotted with the binding energy per nucleon along y axis and mass number a along x axis a systematic study of nuclear binding energy shows that binding energy increases linearly with the a so see the graph uh, we'll discuss a uh, more explanatory graph later after the session and here in the graph the shape of the curve shows that initially for light a value that is light nuclei uh, uh, b by b bar a that is binding energy per nucleon Uh, increases with a when after around uh, when it reaches around a is equal to 60 it remains constant and uh, beyond 200 a is equal to 200 it uh, slightly decreases so here uh, it shows that binding energy increases linearly with a when a graph is plotted with the binding energy per nucleon b bar a b by a with mass number a it shows a uh, relatively constant curve except for a light nuclei average binding energy per nuclei for most most of the nuclei appears about 8 ma another inference from the graph is that the curve reaches its peak around a is equal to 60 which are most tightly bound nuclei so binding energy is high that means it is tightly bound and the nucleus is stable it indicates that below a is equal to 60 there is the possibility of release of energy by combining light nuclei to heavier ones which is referred to as nuclear fusion and also we have another uh, uh, relevant information from binding energy graph that uh, above a is equal to 60 breaking of a heavier nucleus to lighter ones can release energy which is known as nuclear fusion so here studies on nuclear binding energy reveals many different properties of nuclei and lead to huge amount of information related to energetics of a nuclear reaction so next up, let's go through a more detailed binding energy curve this is a typical binding energy curve with the nuclides plotted on it starting from hydrogen nucleus till around iron with the mass number a is equal to 56 the curve shows increase of binding energy per nucleon with the mass number that is you can see it that is from starting from hydrogen till around a is equal to 60 so here it is iron a is equal to 56 then afterwards the curve shows a linear uh, almost a constant value for a binding energy per nucleon and after a is equal to 200 it uh, shows a decrease in binding energy per nucleon with the mass number so the graph predicts the possibilities of nuclear fusion and fission on the basis of a nuclear binding energy now it's time to wind up hope you followed the class thank you